Good evening and welcome to the January 23rd, 2020 meeting of the Yorktown Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Gordon Fine. I chair the board. Joining me tonight is Bill Gregory, John Meistrick, Howard Ornick, Bob Fahey, our recording secretary, Glenda Daly, our building inspector, John Landy, our special counsel, Adam Rodriguez, and our town board liaison, Ed Lachterman. First thing we need to do is set up next month's meeting. So, next month's meeting is going to be February 27th here in the boardroom at 6.30. If you have to send out mailings for next month, those mailings must be sent out between February 3rd and February 12th. If you send them out before February 3rd or after February 12th, we will not be able to open your hearing next month. In order to determine who you send your mailings to, go down to the tax office, tell them you're sending out a zoning board mem um, mailing, tell them your address. You'll have a form that you would have picked up at the building department that you have to write the names and addresses down on of everyone who the tax office tells you are your abutting neighbors that you have to notify. You write those names down on that form. You have to send them a copy of your notice of what you're applying for. You have to send it out by first class mail during those dates. You do not have to send it out by certified return receipt mail, only by regular mail with a certificate of mailing. A certificate of mailing is simply a one little receipt that you fill out with your name on it, where it came from, and where it's going to. Post office then certifies that you sent it on that date. It only costs you about a dollar as opposed to about six dollars. So we only need the certificates of mailing, not those green postcard or return receipts. When you come back to the meeting next month, you have to bring with you all the mailings, the proof of mailings. You have to bring the sheet showing who you mailed it to. You have to bring the notification, what you actually sent to your neighbors, so we can see you sent them the proper notification. You also have to bring with you your completed sign affidavit with a photograph of the sign on the property. Once you have all that, we'll be able to open your hearing at the next month's meeting. If we have to do a site visit, the site visit is going to be held Saturday, February 8th. We start around 9, 9.30 here in the southern end of town, work our way north. If it's inclement weather on that date and we can't go out, we have the next weekend we can go out. So we always in the winter try and do it a couple weekends ahead of time. So it's ahead of the February 27th meeting. That being said, we're going to move on to the minutes of last month's meeting. <clears throat> Everybody receive a copy of them? Yes, we did. Okay, I saw the changes Billy wanted to make. Those were made, so uh, I make a motion to approve last month's minutes. So I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Moving on to the new business. First application is <clears throat> Newman, 388 London Road, application renew of the special use permit for accessory apartment. We'll handle that administratively, refer to the building department. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The Lello, 2906 Hickory Street, application for proposed addition of the front yard setback of 27.04 feet with 30 is required, and a combined side yard setback of 21.51 feet for minimum of 24 feet is required. Uh, we'll set that down for a site visit on February 8th, public hearing on the 27th, refer to the building department. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Glynn, 2032 Breton Court, application proposed second floor addition with a rear yard setback of 21.08 feet, a minimum of 30 is required. We'll set that down for a site visit on the 8th, public hearing on the 27th, and refer to the building department. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorvino, 415 Spring Drive, application to allow an existing front porch with a front yard setback of 45.58 feet. A minimum of 50 feet is required. Set that down for a site visit on February 8th. Public hearing on the 27th. Refer to the building department. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving to the adjourned agenda. First on is Sarlo. <coughs> Excuse me. 675 Sawmill River Road. That's being adjourned at the request of the applicant to the December uh, to the February meeting. Boga. An application renewal special use permit for accessory apartment at 3747 Briar Hill Street. That's being adjourned at the applicant's request as well. This has been on the agenda for a couple of months already as, an as a renewal. All we do is ask our council's office to send a letter to the applicant stating that if they are not prepared to open this hearing in February, that we're going to remove it from the calendar and they're going to have to reapply. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pusello? Jump the gun. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> application of the special use permit for accessory apartment at 608 Granite Springs Road that's being adjourned at the request of the applicant. We'll put that on in February as well. Now you may step up. <laughs> Yorktown Jazz Number 2 LLC. Application for proposed building pad with a front yard setback of 50 feet or minimum of 75 is required. This is on Crompon Road. It's the uh, Lowe's property. Uh, as we'll call it. Yeah, some confusion because we already did this one. Yeah, this and is for the sign. Granted. Yeah, this is the sign. Last time was for the pad. The setbacks for the pad. Yeah. Now we're just doing the signage. Yes. 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 Yeah, that's what we, we, we did the pad. And we yeah, we did the sign because we just wanted to, to go back to, to a, a backup. Back so actually the language that's in the, in the uh, a, uh, agenda is not correct then, correct? Right, right, right. So you are looking for 195 square feet of signage or such additional square feet as may be required where 77.3 feet is allowed, correct? Yes. And I met with the back on Tuesday evening. Um, and, th and this is basically the, uh, the middle pad where Starbucks is going and uh, triple A. And it, the code limits the signs Sign is total square footage of the signage on the building, um, but the planning board suggested, appropriately so, um, that they go for the variance. And the numbers that you have for the variance request are those numbers as proposed by the planning board, in order that the sign the the building can have signage facing lows as well as um, roof two hundred two, because they basically designed the building to have a double front facade, a front facade towards Lowe's and a front facade towards 202. Um, the actual signage, um, I don't have renderings for it, but the, once we had the square footage, it would go through the regular process of being um, submitted for a sign permit to the building department, but at that point, mm -hmm. they, they would then request the variance. Last week, last year, month, we had that on there. So we're trying to get this ahead of that you process. That last month. So we have a memo from the planning board dated January 14th. Planning board at January 13th meeting discussed the subject's EBA referral. Uh, this is from last month, so this doesn't help us. This is about the setback. That's the same so thing. let's do this is the same one. Month. Yeah. We also it's not have, last month. I mean, the dates are yesterday. So we have, they, we have something from a back. I'm looking at a back, but they're talking about the same thing. Nothing they thought they were reviewing what was written on the agenda, the setback only. They didn't. Yeah, they only know addressed about the sign. Right, that's what I just said. The setback only is what they addressed here, not the signage. Yeah, I think I think there's a it was a, communi a, a communication issue. Something got lost in the translation. But you did, you said I, I, I sat with a backer, yes. Yeah. And, and base, basically, the, there's not much for them to have done because it's not reviewing a sign because the sign will be reviewed once the sign, permit for the sign is made. All this is doing is an application to allow for additional square footage for the rear facade to reflect the front facade. When did you meet with the backer? Tuesday. So they didn't generate a memo to us then, as far as I know. Yeah, it's only the, I was on. I was the only one on the agenda because I had that and the winery were on the agenda. Mm. So what that again? What exactly did they tell you? I don't think they had, they had any problem with it because the actual sign review will be done at a later date. I don't. I didn't. I don't have renderings for the sign. They didn't give me right. renderings for the sign. The idea here is that that just getting the square the recommendation of the planning board at the time that the the site plan was approved. Was, and knowing that we had to come for a front yard variance is also to seek a variance for the additional square footage of signage that would be necessary to create a front facade towards Lowe's as well as to, towards uh, Route 202. So we combined both variances. Last time I was here, we took care of the front yard right. variance, and we decided to let the backer have a shot at it, or at least co have an opportunity to comment because out of respect for their jurisdiction on signs, but there wasn't going to be any sign, a design that would have been given to a back at that point, because that was not at the, it was not at that stage yet. What's going to happen is that the the property owner will be making an application to the building department for a sign permit, and at that point they'll say, 
we were exceeding the square footage, so we figured we'd get this done at this point so that we wouldn't have to do it at a later date. Well, I see a note to the file from the secretary for the zoning board, the legal secretary, not, not Glenda, to Abaca, dated yesterday. Asking them to please re submit all reports and original within. Uh, Says we're taking this matter up on February 28th. <laughs> I, I don't, you know what? I, 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 I'll, when I showed up at a back and they thought it was a front yard setback too, and I said no. So I, 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 I've got no problem because we, the, uh, the, the building plans are coming in tomorrow. <coughs> so, so it's, it's, it, it's not going to, so we put over February. You can put it over, yes. I got no problem with putting it over because, and we'll straighten it all out. And maybe you can. Just I mean, make... you basically amended the application last month. It was just a setback until during the meeting. Then the idea of combining. We we did we did it ahead of time. Okay. We did we did do it we did it ahead of time and actually sent out the notices with, with both, both. Okay, that's good. Both uh, uh, requests for relief of, under the code to all the property owners. We made sure that all went it, 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 when we were first with between the first meeting of setting up your agenda for the following meeting. We made that change, but we got it through the okay. system so that everything would be noticed right, the correct so, yeah, way. So, what I mean, we'll just do then is adjourn it for February. February. I've got no problem with that so because it, I, when I looked at the agenda tonight, I said, "Oh, so we got to." But so it, it, but uh, okay, and I, I guess I'll talk to. Had the meeting already. Just about hasn't sent us anything. Okay, so yeah, they think it's next month. And we'll have the rendition of the, what the sign is supposed to look like. Is that where we're going to get that information? He's saying he can't do that until he knows what Abaca is recommending. Got it. Got it. I, I, got it. Uh, I've got no problem with Abaca coming back and saying, look, I've got no problem with the square footage. Come back when you got the sign design. I've got no problem with that. It's just that I don't want to go through it. We, we'll, we'll get stuck two months between, in zoning board. For or the at least, footage I mean, at at least bring a day. plan that shows on the buildings, maybe yeah, where yeah, the signs I'll, I'll, will be. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't can... give us the content because you haven't designed right, it, but right, at least right. the position. Does the, does the uh, me memo that you read, are they going to review that when? February it when? It doesn't say when they're going to review it. I'll, 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 what I read is just that Peggy Ann was telling them that it's on the February agenda. I'll, 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 28th. Okay. I'll, I'll, this. I, will, I will talk to Peggy Ann. I got to go back to a back. They're very pleasant to, to hang out with for a little bit, so I'll go do that, and I'll make sure that we get it all straightened out. So okay. I got no problem. I got no problem with adjourning it. I just thought so we, you know, but uh, you just want to make sure that the agenda is correct too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the notices, if you look in your file, the notices went out to everyone with both uh, requests for relief under the, for the, so, under the code. I would move that we adjourn this to February. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's, always, it's always fun coming to see you guys. See you anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> to see us again. Anybody here on Persichetti? Come on up. <clears throat> Application renewal of special use permit for accessory apartment at, <clears throat> excuse me, 1344 Ed Chris Road. Can I come to the podium? inspection on this You have the mailings? Yeah, we do. We dropped them on the way up here just now, so they may not be in perfect order. John, will take a look at them. There's one that I didn't get back. That's all right. As long as we got it. We just need the receipts for showing the newest when they were sent. We don't need this. Take the sign. You should have this. Next time you find yourself in town, just stop in the building. Do you have the notice you paid in the No, we didn't. No. We didn't understand that we had to bring it this evening. We did. What, the letter that I sent you? Yeah, an example. No. It's, it's, it's just at one home. of them. I can. Uh, you want to go back to the main file? Not now. Well, I got to. Just, you need one copy or you need a copy of. the names written on that. Yeah, we'd only need like an example copy of that, not okay. every single one that you sent to everybody. Uh, we're looking at these receipts here, and there's also no, no names. Well, uh, 
why yeah. I have okay. these. Your seat yeah. is heated. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> What did he say? He's on Sherry that I put the last name as Mary, Marietta. <coughs> it's actually a pigeon. <laughs> but they sent the card back. That's why he moved. Got it. So um, they don't have the example of the mailing? Can you match up? Are you able to match up the postcards, though, with the uh, Looks receipts? Like We're going we to do that now. If we got them all back. Except for one. Except for one. Okay. Your daddy. Okay, so it strikes me as amazing how complicated this process can get when uh, there really is no need for it. It's a very simple aspect. But it seems a lot of problems. What did you send out in your mailings? Just a renewal, renewal of the application. Do you recall what it said? Well, there was the original. And then I put renewal <coughs> up on top. Mm -hmm. <coughs> did, it de did it designate the property address? Yes. Yeah. Add your name on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we and also has right. tonight. I guess that's what I mean. Okay. Hearing and all that. And we could bring it back later on if you right. want to mm -hmm. approve it on the condition we bring back the letter. So. Just in the future, this is your proof of who you sent it to. The post okay. office really shouldn't be stamping anything that doesn't, you know, what you're doing with this, you're getting a stamp thing to walk away from that says, I mailed this to someone. Right. But if you don't have their address written on there, you really yes, have no they proof. That, they yeah, tell me that. They shouldn't stamp something that says, hey, you just proved you mailed it oh, to no one okay. because they didn't write it. Well, anything. we could use it for next time. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> I'm just trying to... No, to, I, for the I next understand. time, okay. three years, you're not so going to probably remember either. It looks but. <laughs> like they mailed out, mailed out to all of the individuals that they needed to. We have green cards for all of them okay. except the one that didn't come back, which I have here. And you have so the sign affidavit? They mailed them out. We do not have the sign affidavit. Do you have the. We have a picture of the sign. We have a picture of the sign. Yeah, I don't sign affidavit. And, and we don't have the. spare the, copy of the yes, sign affidavit. Yes, yeah. We're going to give you a copy to sign affidavit you need to fill out, sign it, and submit it back to us. Okay. okay. What about a copy of the notice? Uh, if I'll, you I'll talk about that. Because I have just one problem at a time. I have blanks of those two if you want it. Okay. want to hold on to that. Fortunately, you have the, you have the photo with the sign. So. Yeah, and I'm just going to write their section and block on John's going to fill it out for you with the section <laughs> and block. Which most people don't know the section lot and block off the top of their head. That John is all right. <coughs> okay. I don't care what they say. So this is a renewal of an accessory apartment, correct? Correct. correct. All right. We have a memo from the building department, and what I'll do is, since the applicants already stated what they sent out, I think it's sufficient enough to open the hearing, mm -hmm. and if we decide it in their favor, we'll just make it subject to their submission of the actual notice that they sent. Mm -hmm. uh, memo dated December 16th. The premises are inspected December 9th. It's in substantial compliance. You need to get a new CFO, obviously. Otherwise, there's no objections. Anybody in the audience comment on the application? No? All right, we have the sign affidavit now? Um, he's in the process of filling it out. He's getting a signature. <laughs> What's taking so long? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that stuff. Get a, you got a uh, message from your wife. She told me she said reception's bad tonight. Yeah. You hear that, John? Tom? <laughs> reception's bad tonight. Okay. Matter, I wouldn't respond, so she sent it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Persistent. Maybe that's how we really look. <laughs> okay. I would move then that we grant the application for the new accessory apartment at 1344 Ed Chris for a period of three years, subject to 
the applicant submitting the notice of mailing that was actually sent. You have to bring that down to the legal department, give it to them, and then the uh, building department will be authorized to issue the new CFO. Do I have a second? second? Three to three years. Okay, second? great. Thank, Thank you. you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You're Good welcome. Night. Adorno, 146 Cordial Road. Application to allow an accessory structure with a side yard setback of 5.5 feet, minimum 15 feet is required, a height of 17 feet 10 inches or minimum or maximum, excuse me, of 15 feet is required, and a combined footprint of all accessory structures of 86% of the main dwelling or a maximum of 80% is allowed. So we're actually requesting an adjournment to next month, um, but just to kind of recap. You were going to re-notice, weren't you, for the shed? So, yeah, so just to kind of recap where we're at, we, we submitted the building permit for the shed and all the plans, but we're waiting for the denial letter um, so that we can variance. update the variance. Um, okay. So that's where we're at now is we're looking to push it to the next month and actually update to include um, the shed denial once we have that and then apply the, for everything at, at the once. Hearing is, the hearing is not open yet, so we, we can't take testimony, but I would suggest... Uh, that you go over the rules, the town regulations for the wood burning boilers. Okay. Because okay. your client, I believe, has one in the garage. Okay. Which may or may not be permissible. Okay. So you go over the regulations it, uh, for that. You got grandfather just, just, just remember that basically right. you're doing a, a rendering of a, uh, a building that was compliant. And, okay, yep. Uh, did, yet, did the applicant intend to replace or reinstall the wood burning stove? Um, I think his intention was to reinstall, so but I'll I'll get clarification okay. on that sure and then make checked. sure it's clarified. Yeah. Okay. So Thank I move you. that we adjourn the uh, the applicant's request. We move to adjourn it to February. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. See Thank you. Then. Thank you. We didn't open oh, that, that last was. month. Anyone here on, on the, uh, Korean? Come on up. Babu Korean. 1822 Morris Avenue, application for a special use permit, renewal of a special use permit for accessory apartment. Good evening. Good evening. Do you have your mailings or did you submit them already? Mailings. What is this? Oh. John, we're handwriting these now. Done. We're handwriting these now. Because it came in like today. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fortunately, I could read my own handwriting, so I could read you and you. So I know that. This is a renewal, correct? Yes. Did we request that you come in? Pardon? Did we request that you come in personally? No. Generally, just so you know for the future when you see us again three years from now. Okay. Is, I thought I had to be here for the second time. We round. do renewals of accessory <laughs> apartments generally unless there's an issue that we tell you you have to be here for. Oh, okay. We handle it administratively, meaning you have to fill out all the papers, send everything in, yeah. but you don't have to be here for the, for the meeting. Oh, okay. Okay, we're good. We're good? Okay. Could you give us your name for the record, please? Abu Kurian. And this is just a renewal for the uh, accessory, accessory apartment application. Yes. Me, correct? Yeah. Okay. We have a memo from the building department dated January 17th. Uh, no changes. Has the applicable CO detector and smoke detector. Okay. Any comments from the audience on this application? This being a renewal, I, grant, I move that we grant the application for the renewal of the special use permit for accessory apartment for a period of three years. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. See you. In, maybe well, we won't see you in three years. Let's see your paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. You won't give me a seat over that. Night. Good night. night. Anthony Cicinelli. Application for front porch and stairs with a front yard setback of 29.91 feet, minimum of 40 feet required. 651 Oakside Road. Good evening. 
you have your mailings? I do. Hand them up. One, two. Picture the sign and the sign affidavit. I don't. Okay. Let's respond to this. But um, the signed affidavit, what was that? Sign affidavit, no. I can give you one of those, you but I can't create a picture. I don't. Let me see the picture I took has one. Let me just take a look. One? <coughs> I don't see it in the file, but let me see if I have one in here. When we were there, <clears throat> okay. I just don't have the addresses here. Do you have a copy? Like, is these going to match these the copies you gave me? Because if not, you got to give me a list of everything so I can. They will match. There's one per letter. What color is the house? The old color was tan. It's now blue. I don't know if this is the house or not. I see. Could you come up a second? Sure. Is that the house? Okay, let's see if I have another one now. Yeah. How about that one? That's the house, okay. Unfortunately, my photos don't show the sign. Do we have everything else? Everything else except the affidavit and the, and the photo. The sign. Yeah. Was the sign posted? It was. Is it still on the property? I was there yesterday, and it was there yesterday. I suggest we do. I don't want to, unless there's an issue with everything else, mm. I don't want to drag them back again so we can make it subject to the submission of a, the sign affidavit with the photo. Yeah. With the photo, yeah. Okay. The mailings are good. And the receipts are in existence. Yeah, he gave one mailing per receipt, so this also indicates. But he actually got the right mailings done. Yeah. All right, well, we'll have to talk about why. Someone got the message. He used the cheaper method that's allowed now. 80% of it anyway. I mean, I don't have a picture of the sign, so. Yeah. <laughs> Should I give that him the sign affidavit? <laughs> okay, you want to give us your name for the uh, record, please? Anthony Cicinelli. Okay, and you are building what type of addition? It's a front porch variance for a front porch. How big is it? How big is the porch? Square footage, it's 28 square feet. You submitted plans, correct? I did. He's in plans. So it's really only the stairs and you're covering the stairs? Correct. Okay. We have a memo from the building department dated January 17th. Um, they have no objections to the application. Anybody in the audience have any comments on the application? We did a site visit on this two weekends ago. The applicant is only looking to basically put new stairs in Correct. and cover the stairs. It's not a porch that covers the whole front of the house. Right. It's only the stairs that will be encroaching in the setback. So it's, a, it, it's the stairs and the 
the overhang. Yeah, overhang. Kind of, right, right. It's a concrete. It's concrete stairs. It's uh, no. It's going to be a. Um, it's going to be wood. Frame okay. with truck stacking. So I don't see how that would have any kind of negative impact on the neighborhood or change the character of the neighborhood. Um, I would move that we grant the application for a front porch and stairs, a front yard setback of 29.91 feet, where minimum of 40 is required at 651 Oakside Road, with the usual stipulation that this pertains to the requested variance only, not the remainder of the property line, and that the addition be built in substantial conformity with the plans submitted. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, do we have to make it Aye. subject to the uh, subject to the submission of the F sign affidavit and photo. Yeah. Finish filling it out. I put the some information there for you, but okay. All right. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you. Scott Carson. Application for ground solar panels with a side yard setback of 36 feet 9 inches, minimum of 75 feet required at 1295 Winslow Drive. Good evening. You have the uh, mailings? Yeah, th that would go over there. The, the board goes that way. You have to put it up on. Uh, unless, unless you mailings want to stand go here. here. Mailings go here. <clears throat> We're going to have uh, more workers and less, less watchers here is what we need. Is he simulating you don't do anything? Hmm? Is he simulating you don't do anything here? No, I don't do anything. He's got my number. I just fake it. I pretend. I'm not even here. Yes, thank you. So uh, my name is Jane. Hold up till we, we go have through to the go through this. Since it's stapled it's pretty tight, I'm just going to check <clears> it out <throat> quick. Can't open the hearing until everything's in order. Understood. At least these are in the same order. Did you include a sign affidavit that's along with the picture? It just says I posted the sign and you sign it. What do you need? Sign affidavit. Is there a picture of the sign? Yeah. If you could make it look like 19th century soldier. Three. <laughs> I would have if I knew. Three for three. All right. I have a blank copy here. Who needs the affidavit the sign? I can sign one now. Yeah, I have a blank copy. I don't know why I bring them to the meetings just in case. Uh, Every it says paperless is dead. Yeah. Um, All right, so we need to sign affidavits. So well, it's the meantime, while that's being, yeah. we have to put the mailings <clears throat> in the file. Yeah. And those cards, unfortunately. We have a purple pen, which is not. Those two, yep, those two green blue? postcards. Here. We'll take those back. Those don't, don't, they don't go like this? Yeah, you have the. Uh, okay. Yeah, it has the other ones. ones. You can have them. Right. Thank you. Why don't you give us your name for the record? Thank you. Yes, my name is uh, James Glover. I'm with Green Hybrid Energy Solutions, and we are the contractor that Mr. Scott Carson, the owner, who's to my left, has uh, hired to install this 10.9 kilowatt solar system uh, with your approval tonight. So this is going to be ground mounted as opposed to going on the roof of the house, correct? That, that is correct. There, there's a couple of issues, and I'll show you, you know, why we decided to go that route. Uh, the house is in very close proximity. Uh, this picture is oriented so that south is below the house. And you can see that just west of the house there are some very uh, large trees that would impede the production of the solar system. <coughs> so we took our shading tools throughout the property. And the only place where we saw there was efficiency was in the side yard, which runs adjacent to Haynes and, and Winslow. So from a uh, 
production point of view, this was the most efficient location. Um, this would have been about 60% efficient. Sitting over here, it's about 95% efficient. If you notice, it's facing southwest, and actually a little southwest is actually an ideal orientation for solar. Um, it's the most expensive cost of electricity. It's, a <clears throat> it's the time where the utilities call for the power at the most time, in the afternoons, May, June, July, August, September, which is why uh, the Public Service Commission and the utilities support solar because it's providing power back at the time where they need it most. Would you have used the same number of panels if you were able to mount them on the roof? We would have needed more panels. This is effectively eliminating 100% of his roof. Remember I said 95% mm -hmm. efficient? There wouldn't have been enough roof space. What I'm just saying is, yeah. had the roof been sufficient for sunlight, <clears throat> Would you have needed more or less panels? We would have needed more. On the we would have needed about. We would have needed more roof. Yeah. We would have needed. How more many roof. panels are here? This is 28 panels. To make it, the bill go away, we would have needed on the roof 40 panels, and there wasn't enough roof space to accommodate 40 panels. So, so what is, size is the panel? The panel, uh, very similar, about the size of that TV screen. Okay. Three and a half feet by five and a half feet to six feet. Um, How but high it doesn't come there? in HDMI. <laughs> How high off the ground are the panels? So good, good question. Um, the plan is to, um, because we're in a town where snow is very prevalent, um, we were going to be two feet off the ground in the front, and a, 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 between seven and eight feet off the ground in the back. Of each, or like there's two. Yes. So that would be the back orientation. That, this would be the front. So um, we could play around with those numbers, but that was giving ideal production. Are you looking to generate just enough power for this house, or are you looking to sell power back to the grid? So the, uh, we're, just, we're just looking to eliminate um, Mr. Carson's bill. Right. The, uh, <clears throat> the laws mm -hmm. of net metering governed by the Public Service Commission, the most you can do is 110% of usage. The reason why they will let you exceed that is because over time the panels become insufficient. So if they let you go 10% more, it's like all of us. We work a little less efficiently every year. You get it to, to about the same level. Um, <clears throat> there was a time where you could overproduce, but the utility has a wonderful feature where when you buy electricity from Con Ed, you pay 24 cents a kilowatt hour. When they, when they buy it from you, they pay 6 cents. Economically, it doesn't make sense, does it? So here's one of my concerns is this is an old neighborhood. You have a lot of old houses on that neighborhood, and they're on nice pieces of property also. Yes, sir. So one of the concerns is, obviously, this would be a definite change in character for the neighborhood, seeing solar panels on the ground as opposed to trees and old houses. Mm -hmm. What can you do about screening those panels? Sure. You want me to take this, or you want to? Uh, no, I'll take it. Sure. Um, I'm lucky that one of my across the street. You gotta stay by the microphone, sir, because it pick you up. Okay. Um, I'm lucky that one of my across the street neighbors, a couple, are both landscape architects. That's what they do for a living. They're retired, but that's what they do for a living. So, <clears throat> so I've been working with her to um, create, to decide what we're gonna plant because I don't want, I don't want people seeing the panels. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like I just. It's, to me, it's kind of weird, the idea of driving up the hill. Because you, you drive up the hill and you come up here and then you see, see my yard, which is um, I'm not doing anything with. And uh, I've been there 12 years, and my kid grew up, so there's no sledding. Um, but uh, so I, I won't really want them screened. And I talked to my neighbors, and they're like, yeah, we're, we're good if you, you know, if you plant some trees. So, uh, so... We've got like some green giants here. This is just the initial plans. I mean, like possibly we could tweak it. Um, the, a blue spruce right here, nice big blue spruce evergreen. Um, th these plants here aren't evergreens, so we would throw some rhododendron, rhododendron here, and some holly here. 
Um, these have to be taller because uh, my neighbors from their top window, they need to, I need to get up to about 12 feet to obstruct their view completely. Right. It's not going to reflect back at the neighbors, is it? The panels? Uh, no. So. No, not at all. So the, um, the, the orientation of the panels would reflect toward Mr. Carson's house, okay. mm -hmm. uh, but not, not in any way, shape, or form, especially these trees over here are about 30, 40 feet high. Right. And with the additional foliage here, any, any reflective light would go right into the tree line rather than to the neighbors or the street. Not to mention that behind the panels already are some on the north side, on Hazar, and you can see the you can see the vegetation right there. You know, with 12, 14 feet high of vegetation and some 30 foot trees also behind the pre-existing. So we would also put some ink berry here. And I just learned about all these trees in the last month or two. They talk to you about deer resistance. Rhododendron, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, a work. that's kind of a luxury for me because yeah. they're so pretty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got to spray. I'm mean, going to have to spray these guys. Yeah. I've already talked to the garden center um, in Katona mm -hmm. about spraying these guys. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to spray them every year. It's worth it. It's like 200 bucks. So, you know, I'm going to be saving that per month easily. So, um, and then these are uh, miscanthus, which are like these cool green grasses that turn white. Anyway, I'm, you know, I'm noticing that these things all over my neighborhood now, that they're scattered in different places. But luckily I have this landscape architect who's just doing it as, you know, for, for free and because uh, she's retired. And <coughs> she's going to be driving right by this because she's like right up here. So she wants it to look good too. Um, most of my neighbors don't really care about like obstructing us, but like they, you know, like my next door neighbors that are right here, they're like, yeah, well, we don't care. You know, it's good. It's it's solar, but but I still would rather not. You know, I just I don't want people to see it because I, I don't know. I'm like, I have the neighbors were to sell, the new people come in, they might not like it. They might they might be uncomfortable. So what you're proposing is is it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, and. Um, and I figure, you know, because if, if, you'll be able to see them from my <clears throat> from my bedroom window for sure. These will be short trees, but you know, I'm okay with that. And if somebody doesn't like them, they're not going to buy the house. Well, they're yours. You have to be okay with that. Where are you putting the two rectifiers? Say that again. Where are you putting the rectifiers? You mean the inverters? Inverters. Ah, okay. Good, good question. So, um, at, at the panels that are mine. Yes, the microphone. Right the mic. So the panels will be located uh, with optimizers right right behind them, which is a nice feature if anybody's with the fire department and has of interest. This gives you rapid shutdown at the panel level. So um, we have two choices. We can put the inverters. Remember I said it was seven to eight feet? Right? So we can put those, and there it's a white box, probably about the size of half of that table cover or a two by three foot area. It's a single inverter. Mm -hmm. So we can put the inverter there and then pass AC to the house or we can run DC underground and then put the inverters, the, uh, the equipment, the existing AC equipment, the meter is right here. So we can put the inverter right behind it. So we have two choices. One, and we can actually put it on this side where it's very well inoculated and isolated. Um, we can put it here behind it, or we can put it here. There's two of them, right? There's actually only one. So this is an 11 kW system. Um, you can do, there's a ratio of DC to AC, so you can actually do 1.5 times DC to your AC rating. So for instance, if you had a 15 kilowatt solar system DC, that's the panel rating. You could put a 10 kilowatt inverter mm -hmm. there. It can handle that additional input. So it's one inverter, it's a small white box. I'm inclined to have it here behind the array because now I can shut it down both on the DC and AC side right. to service it. And I'll just put another disconnect here 
case the fire department needs there's a problem with the house they want to make sure there's no issues we can shut that off there mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so that's my preference uh, uh, and again we can put it in a location we can put it here we can even put it between these two arrays here so the panels themselves you know block any view so overall it's a pretty large-scale project to try to get you know your entire usage covered um, is there a positive return on your investment with this project are you doing it because you're going to save money or are you doing because you want to be environmentally <clears throat> friendly like what's your what's your purpose here in this well, project? I, I have a neighbor who down the hill um, who has solar and doesn't pay anything right so it's free and it's gonna we figured out it'll take seven years to pay for it and they um, the, the general consensus Searching the internet is that it increases the value of your house about four percent, which in this case is worth about twenty thousand. So uh, with a tax credit, which is about twelve thousand, thirty percent federal tax credit, and then like a five thousand tax credit from New York State, the whole thing will cost me about twenty-one thousand, and it should take about seven years to pay that off. So um, you know, part of it is the principle, like like, hey, like why am I paying for this when this power is just coming? At the main thing is that my neighbor got it. You know, like I've always thought it was like an, a nice idea, mm -hmm. but but now I feel like it's 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 like stupid <laughs> for me not to do it because, um, you know, it, my neighbor did it and like it's just he's just reaping the rewards. You know, he has to pay like twenty bucks a month minimum. Um, that's like the minimum bill. Right. But mm. but. It, but that's really it. So to me, it's sort of like a no-brainer investment that I should do, and um, you know, it should pay off within seven years. And then I don't know if it'll make my house worth more than twenty thousand. Who knows? You know, right. I'm just kind of lucky. Well, I'd be concerned about the value of your house with this in in the yard. I mean, it, like your neighbor's is probably on the roof in a more standard. Uh, it, it actually is in his yard. It's, but it's, it's like he's got five acres, so it's like way back, so you can't even see it. Okay. Um, but the thing is that you know, um, like any property, you know, like I have, I have a rinky-dinky pool over here that I didn't even, to me, like it was a negative. You know, but I bought the house despite it. Right. Right. So. Some people are going to look at it and they're going to say, uh, I, I don't want, I don't want that. Right. But some yeah. people are going to be like, hey, we're no electric. Right. No electric bill. Sure. And we're being environmentally. Yeah. Right. That's, that's a great analogy. Because uh, I've been mm -hmm. doing this for 10 yeah. years. I actually had hair on my head when I started this business. <laughs> uh, it's like a swimming pool. Like Some people love solar. Yeah. They love swimming. And some people think it's just the ugliest thing in the world. And like. Like uh, Scott said, they're just not going to buy it. Um, but it's also an investment in, in our children's future because, you know, I've seen what carbon effects have, we've had on this, on our planet, and I've seen what's happened with the polar ice caps. And my wife's a science teacher. My mother-in-law's a science teacher. You know, if, if we don't do things like this now, our children and grandchildren are going to pay for it. And uh, so it's it's more than just economics. It's it's also our society and our world. Okay, and anybody you. in the audience have a comment on the application? You want to come up? No. Just give us your name when you reach the podium. Mike Capalbo. I'm a neighbor of Scott's, a friend of Scott's, and I'm okay with the project. I just really had a question about these things. And I talked to Scott about this, too. So it goes in, and all the screening's up, and plants are up, and it looks great. You can't see it. What are the obligations of a subsequent owner? If he were to sell and somebody else has the property, like say a storm comes and knocks down the blue spruce, well, is a new decision, person? Any decision we would have would say that you do have to do the plantings per the planting plan and maintain them. Now, it's a variance, so the variance doesn't just run with Mr. Carson. It runs with the land, so it doesn't disappear when a new owner comes in. So the new owner is still obligated under the same decision. Uh, so that's my right. question. So, so, it would so be, if the DRE yeah, did it or something like that, he doesn't... Yeah, it's, 
it's in the decision and he's it's legally required to be maintained but it would then become an enforcement issue that you, you or someone well, somebody would have to go and say you have you to know, go to the building the department code enforcement and but because he has the variance on it's enforceable somebody right. has recourse they can like come somebody, to town and say hey you've yeah. got to the deer ate your bushes right. you got to do something they about would it. have that authority <laughs> but you know, it gets a little complicated to enforce some of these things sometimes, too. So keep that in mind, right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, I, I know Tr Scott's going to do the best right. he can. And, and, you know, I may be gone, but just the thought crossed my mind. <laughs> and I want to know if there was anything, you know, that this obligation transferred to the next owner. Thanks uh, a lot. Uh, uh, Billy, did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, well, why don't you read the memo first? Because I believe that... The only memo is the building department. When we were last last month, when we referred out, we I only have a memo from the building department dated January 17th that shows no objections. Okay, we referred it to the planning board. I have nothing here from the planning board. You folks meet at all with the planning board on this application? Did we? Yeah. No, we we did not. But you know, go ahead. We did not. In fact, that was addressed at the last meeting. And I, if I recall this, you know, 63, and I could be wrong, I thought that that was done internally, that a note would be sent from this board to the planning board and that we had to take no action on that. Well, what happened was is that we basically, at the last meeting, referred it to the planning board. Uh, from what I understand, reason for doing that. and that's why I was looking for uh, the memo, what was our reason for sending it to the planning board? Uh, we wanted to have them take a look at the landscape. At the landscape? Yes. And one of the things that I think the, uh, in a conversation that I had with the planning director recently, he indicated that the planning board wanted to do a, a site visit on Saturday. This Saturday? This Saturday. Are you aware of that at all? I hadn't heard that. Do I, do I have to be there for that? I, was, I I mean, I have no notes. I just had some I okay. doing on Saturday, but I couldn't we did. Really we did. The only, we the only the reason I'm asking is that basically at the end of the day, and to the gentleman's point, uh, I would like to see a rather definite, defined landscaping plan for this particular project so that we can have it in the pot, so that we can basically refer to it in case some question or issue comes up. And that uh, we also have a basis for maintaining uh, the, the landscaping and the screening. And I believe that was going to be one of the things that the planning board was going to discuss. And I know you have a, uh, a quote unquote draft plan. Yeah, when we, have, we, we can give you a copy of this. Yeah, uh, we, yeah, as a matter of fact, we yeah. have copies of it. But, but I guess my, my real concern with with the uh, proposal and obviously it, it, it's good ecologically in my mind was the fact that we wanted to make sure that it was screened from and that the planting that was going in was going to survive and be viable as a screening mechanism for now and into the future. I want to make sure that the plants that are being chosen are can accommodate to this to the site and and uh, the height and spread of the plants will be sufficient when they're full when they're full that so it's going to screen so you itself. want a more formal plan with with uh, I, that criteria I certain I certainly would like and to if, first if I may mr. Gregory yes. also for an enforcement yes side of it if I don't have a defined planting a defined mm -hmm. heights defined everything there's nothing for me to enforce right so this way <clears> to <throat> the gentleman who asked if something happens to something how am I going to enforce it if I don't know what needs to be replaced? So for an enforcement issue, I would ask the board for a defined planting plan. So what I would suggest we do is we'll adjourn this for February so we can meet with so the planning board can go out there and take a look. And I suggest in the interim, contact planning department and talk to them about it and tell them, you know, you met with us and we're asking for a defined plan. Want them to look at a defined planting scheme to be submitted to the board and any other 
you know, obviously any other comments they may have. Did your neighbors draw this up? Is this, this with the retired uh, landscape architects? Did they draw this up she, for you? She, she gave me a handwritten. Okay. She's old school. So I yeah, gave yeah, her, no, that's I, I gave her this, and she, she marked she had, it. And well, I, she had recommended these plants? She had, it was her okay. recommendation? This is a combination of her recommendations and my, my require, you know, my preferences. Right. That's why I wrote it, Andrew, here. Mm -hmm. um, but we, like, just decided to do this the other day because there's really no evergreen right there. Right. So, um, so that's why we, we said, hey, let's make that a blue spruce. And she had yeah. some reason why she didn't want to put any Norway spruces in here. The height and spread. Um, but these ink right. berries are, the idea with these ink berries is that they're kind of like this tall. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, uh, in case there's any uh, emptiness at the, underneath those green giants, mm -hmm. like it'll still obstruct through there. So that, that's why, you know, you got these smaller plant, smaller circles or smaller plants, and the holly actually is still small. But um, the reason why that's there is because this is a burning bush, and it's, you know, a couple feet off the ground. The, mm -hmm. the branches are a couple feet off the ground. So um, eventually that'll get to about 15 feet mm -hmm. tall. If you let it go, yeah, so I mean, it don't get tall. The holly? The burning bush. The, the oh, yeah, no, the burning the bush. The holly can get 15 to 20 feet The burning bush is tall. huge. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the holly can get as that big as well okay. as it go down the road with it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. But, uh, so, you know, the green giants, they are very hardy. They grow fast and they grow really tall. Um, and I believe they're fairly well deer resistant, actually. It's a pretty good plant for around here. Um, but one thought I'm having just looking at this is are these big trees going to, you know, block the sun? Um, these are pretty far down the hill. So they probably wouldn't obstruct until they got about 20 feet high, mm -hmm. in which case I'm going to have to trim them. You know, one of the things, and I think that you kind of also brought it up, and I think our biggest concern here is, you know, you're driving up Hayes, your project is set kind of on a hill um, in an old neighborhood, and you're basically sticking a large, you know, modern industrial complex there. So, you know, that's why we're so interested in the screening and everybody else is, too. So the more info you could give us, is, too, as far as a rendering, if it's possible, from you know, various vantage points, because is a 20-foot you know, uh, green giant still enough to block this? I'm not even sure because of the way everything's sighted. So I'm not asking you to put a balloon up in the air for that, but just to... The house adjacent, it's actually at a lower elevation. That's true. Right. Mm -hmm. But the house across the streets at a higher elevation. So have you got any ideas? Uh, yeah, the one, the one above me. But there's just, a lot of trees. It's kind of that view up, up, you know, up Hayes. It's like yeah, you're I driving think, on a country I road. Think what we're I think, is, I think you, have, just, you have an idea, basically, yeah, that what we really need is a defined, a defined rendering plan okay. with a couple of maybe uh, visual uh, shots of how this stuff is going to look when it's in place okay. it's not just, no. and also um, you know all, being aware that not only are we trying to landscape uh, the, uh, the tops of these things but also the supporting structure underneath okay and um, also you may want to also include in your renderings where you're going to wind up putting those inverters Inverter, where you're going to put the, the inverters? inverters just have that on show that on the drawing sure Sure. Okay. All right, so I would move then that we adjourn the matter to the February meeting so you have a chance to meet with the planning board and go over these concerns and have the submission for next month. So uh, what's the procedure for meeting with the planning board? Contact what, you may, what you can do is you can call up the uh, planning director's name is John Tegeder, E-E-G-E-D-E-R. It's 962-6565. Uh, and uh, you can ask for him, say that uh, basically you're the applicant. It's, it's, and, and like I said, in a dis real brief discussion with him, he did indicate that, that, that he, the planning board was aware of this application, that they wanted to take a look at it. So uh, you may want to give them a call tomorrow and see if you can uh, get some information. Does, about does this require a second mailing? 
No, this does not require a second note. So it's it's review. It's still good. Drawing, uh, rendering, a couple of pictures showing how that relates in terms of height and <coughs> density with height, type, and count, and then some type of review or approval by the planning board? Well, what they, no, it's not an approved we advice. We just want a memo from them. We, we, asked for a, we asked for a memo so that they could take a look at it. They would have advice, uh, potentially. It's not approval, mm -hmm. but input. Gotcha. Okay. So you're the approval process Correct. building and <coughs> their, their advisors. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're trying to, you know, not just block the array, it's preserve the character of the neighborhood, sure. so it's, it's kind of not yeah, exactly I mean, the same thing as just making sure no one can see it. If you put them on your they, roof, you like how many can you, you like put on? on? Of, of these, only yeah. uh, about 60%. Mm -hmm. right. and, so, then, and, then, and then the roof is obstructed <laughs> about, um, you know, <laughs> like right now, the roof hardly yeah. has any snow. Right. It, al it also would... In Mr. Carson would incur additional costs because now he Check most likely place. his roof isn't ready to be replaced, but it would force him to do that. Right. <clears throat> now you're talking about the system's only 60% efficient, less panels, and now he's got to put a new roof on top of it. So the, the cost to get... You're, you're looking at 25% of the electric, electricity generated if you have... Fewer panels with yeah. less efficiency. With more right? cost. With more yeah, cost. Yeah, I mean, these trees here are huge. So, like, yeah, yeah. I took pictures. I mean, they, they have a tool that tells you, like, when it's going to get shaded, but mm. I just took pictures mm. at different right. times of the day. And, like, at, starting at 2 o'clock, it's covered. The just the branches you can see okay. now. All right, so we're going to adjourn okay. just to February. I, I think we're good. Do I have a second? I, I, second. All in favor? Oh, aye. aye. I do have one question. Um, I, I know that when we plant these, it's going to take a little time for them to fill out. Mm hmm like everything will be taken into account okay yeah, and you can uh, can you let us know when you plan how you uh, depends on what I mean, it won't be completely depends yeah. on what sizes you, you buy plan, too. Right. Like, 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 especially if we do the planting sizes. Yeah. Right. Fall. Right. Right. right well i mean in theory you tell us you know what kind of size they start out as and you yeah. know i guess we can well, kind of and go also from there. Uh, my neighbor recommended that i put like sunflowers that grow like crazy to, to do initial obstruction okay. down here. Um, and then the other thing is um, uh, somebody asked about you know, uh, seeing these. When you're actually really downhill from here. So so except for my neighbor, their top floor, um, people aren't going to be able to see this stuff with, uh, with even like six foot trees here. Well, but it's just right. Come back to the next month good. with the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds Thank you. good. Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Julian Charnas, <coughs> application renewal of a special use permit, storage of a commercial vehicle on residential property, 2248 Edward Lane. Where are you speaking from? You have the mailings? Yes. Want to hand them up? Thank you, sir. Same truck's been there for years. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. That in solar. What year was the you been with us for quite a while? What you, what what truck? What was the year of the truck that you had when you first started doing this? It was a '71 GMC, and you, yeah, 3500, and now I have a 2002 GMC 3500. <laughs> well, the '71's probably worth something now if you kept it. No, I didn't. I I, I, I <laughs> traded it. It's a classic, right? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, Yes, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. This is this. Sign up, baby. We got everything. We got everything. <laughs> You may proceed by giving us your name. <clears throat> Julian Charnas. And you're here to renew your special use permit to store the vehicle. Yes. Which is the same vehicle that's been there for several years already. Yes. And it's been in the same place for a period of time. Since 2002. When I, when I got Almost it. since the dawn of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You were, I think, one of our first commercial vehicle applications when the, when the law first came in. Oh, oh, yeah. And also with my accessory apartment. Right, but you don't a, have that It was anymore. a unique uh, situation. Yes. But that is no longer... Uh, yes. We have a memo from the building department dated January 17th showing no objections. <coughs> Anybody in the audience have a comment on the application? As, as we were just discussing, this vehicle has been in the same location for years already. Um, it's been properly screened. We've had no complaints. Um, I would move that we grant the application for renewal of the special use permit for the storage of a commercial vehicle on residential property at 2248 Edward Lane for a period of three years. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. See you in three. Okay. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. Jeffrey and Sunitha Howard. Application for an addition with a side yard setback of 31.9 feet or minimum 40 feet required at 2835 Old Yorktown Road. Thank you, sir. On this? Well, you Combined side yard, you got it correct. <laughs> I think it requires a good three, four, five, six. I put a solar panel in. Yeah. And then back yeah. to You get the open. Thanks. <laughs> you don't want to like surprises. Oh, yeah, here we go. While they're going through the mailings, it's been pointed out that the wording might be incorrect. That it's not a side yard setback, it's a combined side yard setback. Right. The denial letter that came through has it listed as a combined, and I have a copy of the mailing that went out. Yeah. It also we'll says that. combined. All right, good. All right, so I amended the, I amended the agenda to show that. We're good. All right, so we got everything. So what side of the, what side of the building is this going on? Who's the back? In the back. Ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, uh, David Tetro, architect, working for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Howard. Uh, they're proposing to put a one-story dining room addition off the back of the house. It'll be, if you're standing in the front of the house, the back left. Back left, okay. Yeah. So if, if this, is the, this is the rear of the house, this is where the addition is going. Where the patio is. There's a deck. Yes, or something there's a there? pad. Yeah, there's a sunken patio. Sunken back there. Didn't they? Didn't they put a, or maybe someone before them recently put an addition on this house? Yes, there was an addition put on. I believe the right side by the driveway. Yes, that's what I remember. Yes. Yeah, and then at some point they, I don't know if it was the same addition, but they also, I think, I don't know if it was the previous owner or somebody must have went up. I believe. Yeah. Or maybe that was always up and they just maybe modified it. Well, I, I, this used to be Mrs. McCabe's house. I knew her from like a thousand years ago. And I know that the new people that, that came in, they, they uh, did some renovation work and added some additions. I just was trying to place the new addition in relation to that other one. Yeah, it's back left. So, you, I mean, you wouldn't see it from the street. So the addition that they added on mm -hmm. more recently was on the right-hand side by the driveway. Right. So this is in the back. On the, yeah. Right. You live near there, right? Yeah, it's back. Back. Did it on See, I didn't take it. You attached it. I didn't say you took it. He, he, he wants to have you get away. Thank you. <laughs> Very important. You want to see plans? This you want to see plans? Uh, we were here, right? Uh, yeah, no, we still were here. Um, you okay with we know that? you were there because there's a picture of you there. Oh, God. Yes. Yeah, so maybe we would have to Try to get my good side yeah. next time. Okay, we did a site visit two weekends ago. Um, there's also a memo from the building department dated January 17th. Aside to no objections to this variance, the building inspector does point out there is a fence in the side yard higher than 4.5 feet that will now require a variance, which we noted we saw that when we were there. I think it's, what, six feet, the fence? Yeah. In a side yard? Or yeah, yard? well, what's going to happen is that the side yard, what used to be the rear yard, 
not going to be part of the side yard or a section of that fence, and that's the thing that we're going to legalize. Six-foot fence in a side yard? Where, where there is a side yard, it's a six-foot fence, yes. And where four and a half is required? Correct. But the six-foot fence was there before the variance. Correct. And it was, and it was, and it was okay to be there. No yeah, because I guess Cause it, it was rear. It right. started so it at the rear, rear of the house. Okay. All right. Yeah, by so now, now, it's, now it's part of the side. So we're going to have to legalize that section. Okay. Anybody in the audience have a comment on the application? As I stated, we did a site visit on this, and it doesn't appear from the location of the addition or the nature of the addition that it's going to pose any kind of negative impact on the neighborhood, nor would legalizing the fence that exists here because the fence is already there. It's just basically changing the size of it, adding a foot and a half to it because it's now going to be in a side yard as opposed to a rear yard. Mm -hmm. And rear yard, you're allowed six feet, side yard, you're only allowed four and a half, but when you put the addition back there, you now have a side yard. So what I would move, do is move then that we grant the application for an addition with a, with a combined side yard setback of 31.9 feet where a maximum of 40 is required, that in addition, once the, that addition is built, that there be a variance to have a six-foot fence in a side yard where four and a half feet is the maximum, um, that the addition be built in substantial conformity to the plan submitted, that this pertains only to the requested variance of the addition and the fence and not the remainder of the property line. Do I have a second? Does the fence go down that whole side? You're giving them two six yeah, but you're still foot? Yeah, you still going to have a rear yard. Right. But you're going to give them the six foot for the whole rear section, yard? No. No, the section. Just, just that little section. Correct. Okay. okay. Then you got a second. The six foot fence is going to be in the section where it's now a side yard. Right. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks so much. Thank you. <coughs> Donna Aristo. Application for proposed accessory structure with a side yard setback equal to a front of 25 feet or a minimum of 75 feet is required, and a combined side yard setback of 71.9 feet or a minimum of 80 feet is required. 1595 Journeys and Road. Good evening. Hi. Any mailings? <laughs> Um, I sent them in already. You did? Let's see if they're in here. <laughs> and also some additional um, supplementary. Well, let me see if we have your mailings first. Who did you submit them to? Peggy Ann. Okay. I certainly hope you do, because I don't see them here. <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's take a look here. All right. Oh, we got them. Give these back to you. Okay. I stand corrected. We have them in the file. <laughs> Couldn't check it while you were looking through. Yeah, I was going to say we had them. Can't find them. <laughs> I'll just check them real quick. <clears throat> Roberts, Hurst, Hammer. Okay, that's good. Okay, we're good. <coughs> okay, you want to begin by just starting with your name? My name is Donna Aristo. I'm Mary Ting. I'm the architect. Okay, so we have a, uh, a memo from your firm, correct? Correct. So That's instead of me going through it, I'll let you tell us what's in there. Right. You oh. just want to run us through your application. You didn't read my statement? <laughs> no, just tell us what you're looking for. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking to a, a carport. Okay. A carport where the parking apron is right now because the property is very, um, it's one acre in a five acre zone. It's detached, correct? Excuse me? The carport's detached from the main structure? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so we looked at all the different places we might be able to put mm -hmm. this thing. 
and um, it's because it's very hilly, and I sent the topo yes. two foot contour, so you can mm -hmm. see it's very steep. Um, so we decided that's the best spot. And then I looked around at all the neighboring properties, and they are all like right up front, right up to the, the right street, on the street level. right on the road line. Yeah. And so, in fact, nobody else really. <laughs> so it's a hardship yeah. to put it where the zoning would allow. And my neighbors all signed us something. We have attached to your uh, submission yes. three letters from various neighbors stating they have no objection. Five, there's, yeah, there's six. Five. I only see three in here. All of them. All the interested parties. Oh, wait, there's, there's some more that's kind of not in the right order in here. But yeah, there are, there's five in here. I have one. I have them. They're here. Mm -hmm. They're all here. We have a memo from the building department dated January 17th. They have no objections. So you submitted plans for this, correct? Yes. Okay. Any changes to those plans? No. Anybody want to see the plans? I think we. I was looking at them. It's like an open structure, basically uh, semi-rustic in character. I guess I would call it. <laughs> I, I felt it was in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Just looking at the plan. <clears throat> Anybody in the audience have a comment on the application? Okay, as I stated, we did a site visit a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I didn't see anything that would make me feel that this was going to be a detriment to the neighborhood in any way. Um, definitely improvement for the property owner. I would therefore move that we grant the application for a proposed accessory structure with a side yard setback yield to a front of 25 feet or a minimum of 75 feet required <coughs> and a combined side yard setback of 71.9 feet or a minimum of 80 feet required. Mm -hmm. At 1595 Journeys End Road, with the stipulation that the carport be built in substantial conformity to the plan submitted, and this pertains only to the requested variance, not the remainder of the property line. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Victoria Lodwick. Application for addition with the side yard setback of 14.6 feet, where a minimum of 15 feet is required. 2439 Loring Place. <coughs> what are all these people here from? We'll find out. Could be Stoney. Could be the last name. It's got to be. They came to see these two. No? No. Tim. Just read. If you want to read the names, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to give you the whole file. We're good. We're good. You may begin. All right. Good evening, all. My name is John Scavelli. I'm working with Adam and Victoria Lodwick at the um, property for uh, at 2439 Loring Place. Uh, the proposed application is for a new uh, second story addition over the existing uh, single family dwelling. Uh, the proposed addition is for a new master bedroom, a master bathroom, and then also a, a laundry room uh, section. Um, as part of the, the, the application, the existing footprint of the house has a non-conforming side yard setback, uh, which is this right side right here. So the existing side yard is 14.6 feet, whereas 15 feet is required. Uh, so for the proposed addition, uh, we're looking to keep in line with the existing footprint of the house. So the new addition would, for, for this proposed application, require a 14.6 setback to keep in line with that foundation. Um, and, you know, really it's a 0.4 foot uh, variance that, that we're requesting. So really aesthetically, we wanted to keep that, that wall in line coming all, all the way up so that new addition would, would you know. So it's a minimal uh, variance you're looking for? Yeah, it's, it's very minimal. It's a few inches, um, and it's an existing nonconformity. Anybody in the audience have a comment? 
you almost be here for something. There's only one left. Okay. We did a site visit a couple of weeks ago. We also have a member from the building department, excuse me, dated January 17th. They have no objections. Uh, it didn't appear that the granting of this would pose any problems as far as uh, detriment to the community or change the nature of the uh, neighborhood. So I would move that we... Do we have to, uh, like, since it's non-conforming now, do we have to say anything about approving the existing non-conformance? Because no. that wasn't no. built so long ago. No. no. I move that we grant the application for an addition with, with a side yard setback of 14.6 feet, minimum 15 is required, at 2439 Loring Place with the stipulation that the addition be built in substantial conformity to the plan submitted. And this pertains only to the requested variance, not the remainder of the property line. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know where the Got to be here somewhere. John can't find it. I don't know. 3293 Stony Street. This is an interpretation of the code. Let's see what happens. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. No look over there, Bob. Parties. Beautiful. This is what I want from everyone. Right. Good luck. So, January. I realize the owner's name is also on that list, so there's going to be one short of what you see there because the owners didn't summarize right. themselves. Yeah. In the, uh, the, Tax office, they give you. Yeah, that's it. That's it? Yeah. Yeah, that's this, that's this application. Yeah, you got the uh, notice. Notice. John, this was in my file. All right. I have no idea why. It's in everybody. I don't know why. Huh? Taking it out of give these back to him. We got everything. So this is, this is, this is, uh, they have it down here as 3293 Stony Street. It's a different search. They're not on, so I don't know why it's yeah, it's 3293. Yeah, and, and yet we have the file set up for Heli. We're good. What do we want to do with this? Just leave it for now. They're not on. Okay, so this is this is the Helligman application, correct? Correct. They're here. Okay. It's just on the agenda. This is the number. <coughs> okay, you want to give us your name? Sure. My name is Nick Shunk, and I'm here on behalf of the owners, Bob and Toby. What? Mm -hmm. I am. Your... Uh, I'm their real estate agent. Um, I work with United Real Estate. Um, been working with them on the sale of this property for a while, and we've hit a few roadblocks. They had a buyer lined up. Uh, we're not able to obtain a CO due to this variance issue. Uh, that deal fell through. We now have another buyer who is ready to go, but we know that this will be an issue if we don't address it, so we're trying to do that before we get to okay. that point again. So this is on for an interpretation of a prior zoning board decision. That zoning board decision was from August 28th of 1980, and it was an application for a variance as follows. To use rear outbuilding as a converted soundproof recording studio, rear yard variance of one foot where 10 feet required for an accessory structure, Premises located Stony Street near Judy and Ivy Roads. Section lot and block that's on this decision have, have changed. It's no longer what's on this decision. The new section lot and block is 16.17-2-76. So the decision basically reads, um, applicant testified he is a pianist and composer and would like to use the rear outbuilding as a soundproof recording studio. Applicant also testified that at time it is necessary to, for him to have other music and accom accompany his recordings. The applicant presented a letter from the real estate broker showing that the premises have been on the market but unable to be sold due to this very large rear outbuilding, which is not in good condition. If you're willing to make improvements, put the building in a good state of repair, and submit an engineer's report. Presented letters from each abutting owner that they had no objections. 
Applicant agreed to have this variance run with his ownership of the property only. Based upon the above, the board voted after due deliberation. The grant variance requested. It's made expressly subject to the following conditions. This variance shall run with the applicant's ownership of the property only and terminate upon conveyance thereof. No sign shall be permitted. No public concert shall be permitted. No music class instruction be submitted. At the completion of the improvements to the outbuilding and prior to the use thereof, applicant shall provide the building inspector with certification from a licensed engineer or architect as to soundproofing. Okay. So you're basically looking to do what? Well, a um, couple, I suppose the, the primary uh, issue at hand is that uh, the, the fact that the variance was stated to run with the owner's ownership only, um, we believe that at the time that that was done, that was incorrect and should not have been done. Um, I, I'm sure you all have, and, and probably most members of the public have as well, heard that I think expression zoning runs with the land, and there is legal precedent for that. I'm not an attorney, but we've spoken with attorneys and, and have a certain understanding of it. Um, but the idea of zoning running with the land has to do with, you know, equal treatment under the law um, and the idea that if zoning has been, you know, if a zoning variance has been granted on a particular property for a particular purpose to one owner, no future owner should be denied that same variance under the same let's, circumstances. Let's assume what you're saying is absolutely 100% correct, which generally variances, area variances do run with the land, not with the owner, okay? Sure. What is it you're looking to have us do? So this says that it's a variance as a music studio. So what are you looking for us to do? So that's a use variance. What we're looking to do is, is basically make that variance permanent. But, you know, the, re the real issue is that, you know, we cannot get a CO because they want us to remove heat. Uh, they want us to remove, I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what, but it, the, the owners are being asked to basically convert it back to an unusable space or, or garage space or something of that nature. Um, a, making this variance permanent would allow the building to, consist, to continue to exist as it does currently, which is really what we're looking for. Uh, it's existed this way for... You know, almost 40 years now, and uh, we're not looking to change anything. The building will not change in size, shape, anything like that. They want you to take the heat out? That, that's what we were uh, told as part of uh, our inability to get a CO because, uh, you know, we, we need to remove the heat um, without this so variance. So is there, there's no garage, it's not a garage, there's a gra a garage. no garage door? <laughs> Correct. So you can make it so that they couldn't live in it. So there, I mean, one so odd thing is there's no such thing as a music as room else, as a use. So they varied it into like a non, there's no code that says, you know, music studio as a use. Well, no. So he's not applying for this. So we actually uh, evaluated that as well because we were thinking, even though we think the, the variant should run with the land, uh, we did look at the zoning code and there's actually, um, you know, in this particular part of the code where accessory uses in the R120 zone, it actually states that you can use uh, for private recreation space or similar private accessory use, not for commercial purposes. Uh, we didn't find the definition of recreation space anywhere in the code, but, you know, I, I would argue that that could be a billiards room or a music studio or, or anything like that. So we don't even think that the use is actually not in compliance with the code, but they granted a variance back in the 80s anyway. I mean, there never was a use. Do you, do you that think that there's a bathroom in it? There a bathroom there's a possibility that the reason why they... they put these conditions in was that there was a concern about how the building was going to be used, i.e. noise or things like that? It, yeah. It's yeah. possible, but they did directly address soundproofing, so it is, is in there as a soundproofing and I guess, studio. And I guess and that's, they did get... that's the kind of thing that I'm thinking about, is that if they're talking about things like sound control and uh, things like that, that maybe that may have been a concern when they granted the variance back then. And possibly that might have been the reason why they put in as a condition that it could only run with the individual that was But that would be kind of backwards because then you wouldn't have needed to be saying, well, don't put the soundproof in because we'll take it away as soon as you move. So right. Well, again, why put soundproof in? again, I'm just, I'm just trying to think of why why we why we put in a condition but, like that other than the fact yeah. that they were concerned about uh, my, my the concern use is the my concern is not necessarily that condition my concern is that by law variances run with the yeah. land yeah and i absolutely agree with you that basically at the end of the day the, the variance in my mind was granted uh, for the setback because i don't think that it's an i don't think legally that was a, a legal decision right. at that point but, but even an accessory I, structure okay as a matter of fact uh, 
The record indicates that back in the 50s, the building permit was issued for a building of that size. And unfortunately, it wound up in the wrong spot. Uh, the original building permit indicated that it was a 10-foot setback back in 54. Were you here? Were you on a job? There? Actually, I might have. But, but the thing, the other the thing is, let me finish, yeah. <laughs> is that, that um, however it wound up being less than 10 feet, and that happens all the time, uh, it was never resolved until they, they came in for this particular variance. Uh, back in the 50s, as a matter of fact, the town didn't even issue CO's for outbuildings like that. They were just building permits. And that was, that was a, a standard thing back then. So my sense is, is that uh, when they came in to get the legalization for the structure, somewhere along the line, this discussion about how the thing was going to be used got into the mix. And for some strange and unfathomable reason, uh, we uh, had those conditions put in there. I think the chairman is absolutely correct in saying that that the uh, the conditions probably aren't valid, you know, and legal in terms of uh, being in the variance, and that uh, at the end of the day, uh, do we have a but, difference but I, of opinion yeah. over there? Is there a bathroom in there? I want to hear from our, our <laughs> council. So I'd like to see the decision in order and analyze it to make a, a firm opinion on it. But I can tell you that <clears throat> my understanding is that in and around 1980, the law on this issue was not well settled. And I, there's a seminal court of appeals case that came out in 1988 on this issue that changed the law and, and you know, generally um, held that the restrictions may not be personal to the owner. Uh, as a general proposition, I'd like to look at the facts and, and do some research to give you a firm opinion, but that's that's sure. the general state of the law. But it, it appears to me that it wasn't the general state of law in 1980. Um, but do you know what that 1988 decision or thereabouts, what it did to uh, properties that already had restrictions like that in their decisions? It would, you know, sometimes when courts issue rulings, they're meant to apply retroactively. Right. Um, Usually not. I'd have to look at the opinion. I don't, you know, I have to read it. <coughs> okay. I don't know how to top okay. my head, but I can certainly look into that and provide, yeah. you know, that answer. So, what, you know, one of my concerns with the way it's done also, it's even kind of a step back of does it run with the land? They, they created a use variance for a use that there is, no, there is no music instruction studio as a use in our town code, right? So they... They created a use, but who's to say what that even is? There's no definition of that. So how is it a music studio? It's a building. Well, what, cre what makes it a music studio? Again, again, There's nothing I, that I, we can I, say. I, I don't think yeah, that in the I mean, right. zoning ordinance you're going to so find that things that force the dance studio. Down right. That, that, that way. You know, so, so it's an unenforceable, it's, like it's unenforceable, yeah. well, I mean, it's, it's undefinable. End, yeah. that's, this is not a unique situation. We've yeah. had this before. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, this is a building with what? Like, whatever is in it, how, how do we possibly know that it's a music studio? It's just not supposed to be a dwelling unit. If I may, that, yeah, that is why we, we thought that it, it might be categorized as a recreation space, which is a defined use in the code right. and, and a permitted use in this zone as well. Right. So we thought perhaps mm -hmm. the zoning variance was, or the use variance was never necessary in the first place. It all depends on how uh, recreation space is defined, and it is not defined at and this point. And that's not even defined um, either. But, you know, a, diff a dictionary definition will point you to a hobby of, for recreation, it's and so music recording, music so playing, of, of those sorts, certainly would, would fit that category. Is there a bathroom in it? No. Uh, is there a bathroom in it? Is there a bathroom, a bathroom? There is, right. yes. Is there a kitchen? There is no kitchen. No kitchen? Okay. Yes, there's no kitchen. Let me just, before we move on, anybody in the audience have any comments on the application? Yeah. You want to step up, please? Come on, Dan. <clears throat> how, big, how big a building are we talking about? It's pretty big. That is a bit of a concern. Hmm? Do you want to give us your name, please? Hello, my name is Rob Buchanan. Um, I live on South Shelley Street. My uh, property, uh, the rear of my property uh, adjoins Mr. Heligman's property. 
Uh, I have three issues or questions about the application before the board. One, how do we know that the building is in compliance with the variance issued in 1980? How do we know that? In compliance in what way? It has a C of O to well, compliance it needs. The thing is, we don't know where the property line is. We can't tell. The building hasn't moved since the variance was well, granted. No, I mean, well, the building hasn't moved, but we, can, we don't know where the property line is. That's not we, well, of the yeah, I mean, there's a survey here that I'm Right, we have at. a survey too, and I could give it to you. Um, is this similar to what and it's right? very unclear from both the survey and the aerial photograph actually where the property line is when you get onto the ground. What I'm saying is that yeah, we have a it, survey. it needed a setback way back when, when the CFO was issued. Thank you. If some, the building hasn't moved, obviously, if there's been some discrepancy between the property lines, that doesn't affect what we granted 40 years ago. That would be a property dispute between property owners based upon your titles and your yeah, surveys, not that. what was granted with the CFO. Okay, well, let's, let's move on to the next issue. Um, what we would like to know is if this, if this variance is confirmed, how that affects our property. Well, affect so property. How if we want to build a fence, the building department tells us that we can build a fence on the property line. Mm -hmm. If we do that, that fence would be one foot from the corner of the building in question. Okay. That's the same thing that yeah. anybody with a property line has to do with a fence. You could build it on your property line, but it's recommended you don't, so you have room to service it, so you build it in a couple of feet from your property line. But that's, that but has yeah, nothing to do with this variance. Right. But what that, you do with your property has nothing to do with this Yeah, you wouldn't be variance. prohibited. If you wanted to put a fence up, you wouldn't be prohibited from doing that. You could put a fence up, and, and, you, could be, right and you could be a foot off away from that building. It would make... And, the, and, and we are sure we wouldn't have to do an application? We wouldn't have no, to not do... unless you're looking for a fence that was higher than it was allowed. Okay. okay. That's high. Well, is it your rear yard or a side it's yard or what? Rear yard. Six, six, yeah. six feet. Six feet. Okay. Six yeah. Plus the post. So if, if you so chose, you could put a six-foot high fence a foot away from that building if that's where that building lies. You had, you had said that you don't know where the property line is. Right. And how, that's one of the problems. We you, wanted to build... A, oh, go on. I'm sorry. How can you put a, a fence up? You don't know where the property well, is. Well, the, the problem is I've gone out there many times and measured and measured and measured, and every time... I came up and I said, that's way, that's way close to that building. You would need, and a, you would need, need a surveyor. surveyor. So yeah. I, would, I get a thought point they put, stake, they put to, stakes to in the ground. Right. Yeah. We've looked into that and we we're working with yeah. him to do that. But one foot from his building seems kind of close. See, what we, well, what it, we've got to understand, I mean, we understand what we're doing here tonight <laughs> is we're not addressing the setback variance that was given 40 years ago. We're only here to interpret the decision that was rendered as far as whether or not the building can stay as a heated accessory structure or not. We're not addressing where it was placed on the property or anything like that. That was done 40 years ago when the CFO was issued. We're only addressing what this decision says and what the, prop what the house could be, building, excuse me, can be used as at this point. We can't go back and address all of the issues of the original setbacks. But when he was talking about the variance didn't go, only stayed with this owner, Right. Would that mean that, that the variance could be negated? And no. But as counsel was saying before when I asked the question, first of all, the building doesn't have to come down because it was there before the variance was granted. It's only what the building could be used as. So at the very worst, they would have to take the heating and the plumbing out of it. But it doesn't mean the building gets removed. The building is still permissible. What counsel was discussing before with me was the 1988 or thereabouts decision where it basically said that variances run with the land and not the owner, and the question was, what did that do to decisions that were rendered prior to that 1980 decision? And that's what council wanted to look into. So he's going to have well, to look at that. Yeah, but I, I don't think this decision delineates the area variance and the use variance with the condition of it running with the ownership. It's basically the variance. It says it's, that. It says that. What? It says it terminates upon ownership. Right, so <clears throat> it's the variance. There's two, two variances granted. Uh, in the decision, I think the use variance is what's being terminated. But it doesn't that's say how I that. It to, when I read it, that's how I understood it. What to mean? It basically says they applied for a variance A and but D. But you can't, you can't redo the setback variance. No, you can't. 
It's impractical, but the it's decision. Impossible. It's impossible. Not impractical. <laughs> <laughs> it's highly yeah. impractical. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't see any ambiguity as to what the variance was granted. You have area, and you have, and you have use. And I thought the use variance was what, what they were um, saying. You can't go in when he stops using it. That it ends with the, with, the, with him selling. It. Otherwise, the building would have to come down. Exactly. It just says this variance shall run with the land. The unfortunate thing, which they're referring to, if you read the next line, is. is you have everything you should, to do with you have it. What's the issue, issue about how the variance is written. Where did it say it? In terms of where the building is Here's where it says the variance, what the application is. is. No, it it says okay. okay. Um, so I, I will just ask yeah, once more, over, just yeah. for absolute assurance, that there is, there is no problem with us building a fence on the property line, although it's one foot it's from It's up to you as long as you know where the property yeah, line you're is. You're not restricted. As long as we... Yeah. As long as we you, keep in mind that I'm not... I'm not trying to give you legal advice, just right. practical advice, right. is if you build it right on your property line, you're going to have a hard time maintaining it on the other side. Because you basically yeah. need permission of the other owner but to get to the other side of the fence. You're responsible for maintaining the Your fence, line. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your Absolutely. Okay. I think also, the, the beautiful side of the fence, so to speak, the flat side, if it's like, like a picket fence, has to face out of yeah. your property. Unless yeah. you put up a two-sided fence, the same. The good, the good side right. has to face you your can, neighbor. You can, but you then can, it's facing that warehouse. So well, you can, you can purchase fencing that looks good on both sides. Right. Right. Yeah. You know? right. But, but if or it's just a one-sided fence. Okay. Yeah. My question is so another thing that a, I heard you say was um, upkeep of look the look building. So do we have any... The building looks like it's dilapidated and it's very moldy on the side that faces us. Do we have any recourse in... The only recourse you would have, I mean, if the, if, the building, if the building is not inhabitable, there may be a building code issue. You could speak to code enforcement or whether there's a property maintenance code violation or not. But okay. otherwise, it's up to the building owner to maintain the property. How about that? You can contact code enforcement and ask them. Okay. And, and as far as, I gave pictures, mm -hmm. as far as um, storing may wanna, stuff, hold on to these so that you can. there is a... You need... You can find your answer by the next month, right? And and there is no rule as to what he can store in his property as long as it's not a commercial vehicle. Okay. Same as you could put ladders and mowers in your garage. Or right in the same spot on your property, you know. Well, we put them close, but they're behind our shed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this, not in sight of all, someone else's all of back. these factors are... are yeah part of the original, like we were saying, the original variance to allow it to be one foot off the line. And uh, the rest is now like landscaping and blight laws and things like that that come into play. So I'm saying if you have a, if you have a question about the maintenance of the property, yeah. contact code enforcement. Okay. If they see there's an issue, they'll issue question. the proper violation. So we're going to adjourn Does this for the board a legal now um, grant those Variances We're not granting anything foot? right now. We're probably going to adjourn this so that no, council, general, so that council can <clears throat> give us information on the interpretation. As far as what we grant on a rolling basis, every application is different. Yep. We can grant an application of zero feet on a boundary line if we want, if we so deem it necessary. We can't grant, obviously, for you to go over a property line because we can't grant something on someone else's property. But we can theoretically grant up to zero. It's depends on the circumstances as, Every to, as, to, as, to, as to each one presents itself. And right now we're going to review how the last decision, there's been new legislation has changed the law and how that new legislation has affects the old law. So we need to review that right but now. The and that's time, what, the uh, time to address the do? setback part of that variance was 40 years ago. Right. Was <laughs> right. Now we can't do anything with that. Yeah, we don't have what the way about the machine. fact that it is a music studio and there's music coming out of there? Is that... Violation of the Even now? Board. Not necessarily, no. No. It depends on what they could use the structure for. That's why we're here. But there is a noise ordinance. Well, if they're violating the noise ordinance, once again, you contact the appropriate authorities and they'll see if there's a violation. And that noise is usually police department. I, I was, and, and that's in town code, I believe. The nor noise ordinance is in yeah, effect I from uh, 11 p.m. until 7 a.m. during the week and 8 p.m. on the weekends. And it, it's a decibel level that, that needs to be attained. It comes somebody else. Are you experiencing that now? It's property. Is, that, is there a, a problem no. with noise from the music Some now? Some nights more than others, but 
You keep, if, and, it's, and it's very, very loud? No, no, no. it's not loud, it's, but you can hear it. Right. Okay. Well, you've got to see if, if, it, if it crosses the line with that ordinance. Okay. All right. Okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank very well. You can hold on to those. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'll submit it to the file if you yeah, want. We'll it. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take you on at least. At least. The record. Absolutely. So Maybe get a uh, new property owner in there and changes this picture a little bit. Okay. So it's your best shot. Thank you. Anything else you want to add? Uh, sure. I guess before we adjourn, I understand that if uh, the board wants to get a legal opinion on, on that issue that we raised, you know, that, that is what has to happen. That's why uh, but here. I'm hoping before that uh, you know, becomes necessary that we can perhaps address it from the other angle, which is was a variance even necessary and... and, and do we need a variance for that use, given that the code allows for recreation space? We're interpreting the whole decision, so we have to go through it. Go ahead. Yeah. So you, you just got to give us your name. My name is Bill Chunk. I'm also with United Real Estate. Uh, I'm going to deviate just a little bit for a short while. I, I would like to consider for a moment the human element here. These people trying to sell a house, had it sold, we were going to closing, and it fell apart because of this unresolved matter. We now have a new buyer who is getting impatient, and we are very close to having a second. Well, let me we put it to this. So we're, this we're cognizant of the problems with buying and selling property, but that's not our purview. Okay. Exactly. Fine. So, well, I'll stop at that. So... What you're doing, if I understand it, you're getting a legal interpretation. Our council right wants our council. to look, our council wants to look at the old decision to see what effect that would have had on this decision. The legislation changed in between, if we understand it correctly, in 1980 when that original decision was made, there was one set of laws. In 1988, the laws changed. We're going to look to see how the, those laws, if they changed, does it impact the original decision, and does it have bearing in this instance? So is, is the question which laws apply? The Prior old to 1988, variances did not necessarily run with the land. They could have conditions on that. The decision, as council was stating, in around 1988, changed it basically to say variances run with the land. My question to council was, what did that decision do to the prior decisions? Meant to be some kind of a statute? That's what he wants to look into. Right. Pardon? That's what he wants to look into. Right. To see what it did to the prior decisions whether it said it's retroactive, whether it said it nullifies those decisions, whether it grandfathered them, we don't know. Okay. As of now, variances run with the land. We don't know what, but this was done before then. In 1980, when the decision was made, it didn't. So we're going to look how that changes. Okay. And so... And then we get decided not only based upon what council gives us, but everything else as well. It's not necessarily dispositive. Gotcha. We're just looking at a time factor. That's I understand, so but we only meet once a month. If the person wants it, he has, he's got to be a little bit lenient about it, and may, maybe he'll wait. We're right. hoping so. It's but been yeah. a while. <laughs> We're certainly yeah. trying, yeah. We're yeah, trying no, to convince him. That's, that's understandable. And, and, and the, the owners are, I know it's not your purview. The owners are elderly. They are moving out of state. Everything's on standstill now. But I get it. I get what you're doing. I understand that I'm cognizant of the fact, in my own mind at least, that even if the law changed in 1988, this structure still existed almost 40 years beyond that date anyway. Correct. Has that use. But we have to see what that decision said. Okay. So I guess, what does that mean? We come back a month from now? See you in yes. February. February, I believe it's 27th. 28th. 27th. 27th. February 27th, we just show up. We don't have to bring anything or do anything. Just your goodwill. Just your goodwill. Thank you. We'll see you then. Okay. okay. I move we adjourn this to February 27th. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I believe that completes our agenda, so I move that we adjourn this meeting to next month. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night and happy zoning. Do you